a very good day to all of you to continue with the poem my last touches so it's a beautiful poem written by robert browning we have earlier discussed the theme of the poem in brief so today we will discuss the poem as a dramatic monologue so uh, you know that robert browning's genius it was essentially dramatic Uh, his favorite form is dramatic monologue he started writing uh, when he started writing he wrote so many dramas and the most favorite form of robert browning it was dramatic monologue though this form it was not invented by him but it was immensely popularized after him uh, let me uh, tell you one more thing that uh, he was a psychologist and he had uh, he his poems they are the perfect psychoanalysis of the person's soul so browning found this form dramatic form monologue to be extremely suitable to his purpose and his purpose is to throw light into the consciousness and so he frees himself from all the shackles that impede analysis so thus to him dramatic monologue is a comprehensive soliloquy in which a certain critical moment in one's person is taken and by permitting the individual to speak his character the whole course of his existence are revealed in a brilliant search light so now we will discuss in a very simple manner my last duchess as a dramatic monologue because it interprets the flow of speakers conscience so again what is monologue monologue is spoken uh, it's a speech in which only one person speaks and the listeners only listens so mono is a mono means single so a monologue is spoken in the presence of the messenger of a foreign count whose daughter is being sought in marriage by the widowed duke as i have told you that who is the listener duke is the listener or oh, sorry this uh, this messenger is the listener so the duke is per- perhaps uh, alfonso fifth duke of fena and he married lucrezia when she was only 15 she died in 1561 perhaps she was murdered by his husband by the by her husband so the duke is exhibiting the portrait of his former wife to the envoy to the messenger and the basis of his character is the complacent egotism of the aristocrat who regards his wife as his property he cannot brook her graciousness and innocent gaiety and finally get got her murdered so browning adopts here one of his favorite methods of character study while describing the childish nature of his last touches the duke himself reveals his own narrow hideous character so the poem as it is in the form of dramatic monologue it suggests the character analysis of duke as well as duchess so he is proud of his ancestral name and fame and he is the most jealous person even live in this earth he is very cruel to let his wife to live freely and fully he is specimen of a uh, decadent renaissance he is telling his companion that uh, that he, he never wanted her wife to smile or to uh, to be happy with everybody everyone so to duke her heart was too soon made flat too easily impressed she not only smiled on her husband she smiled on others oh sir she uh, she smiled on no doubt whenever i passed her but who passed without much the same smile as she was his property he could not tolerate this and so he gave commands and then all smiles stopped together this is one of the most uh, famous a line of the poem my last touches and it's the last line then all smiles stop together and this line suggest is it is quite suggestive that the duke got his wife murdered so the heartless duke 
heartless duke instantly dismisses the memory and decides to marry for the second time so what is the another characteristic that he is greedy he expects handsome dowry in his forthcoming marriage no just pretence of mine for dowry will be disallowed so the duke describes the character of last duchess and he really brings out the bright side of her character he says of the depth and passion of her earnest glance she is enthusiastic and expansive by nature she was one of the lonely women whose kindness and responsiveness are as natural as sunlight she is gay gracious full of courtesy to all the duke's narrow and jealous mind cannot brook the broad and expansive nature so he considers his wife as his property and uh, her courtesy to others is regarded as the uh, kind of hindrance or the infringement of the rights of property so implied action and implied conversation they are the characteristics of a good dramatic monologue the presence of the messenger for which the monologue is intended it's very much suggestive here his responses and actions are adequately hinted at when the duke speaks of the officious fool who brought the cherries and when he says all smiles stop together the envoy looks at him with a fearful question in his eyes but the duke's face immediately resumes its mask of complacency there is implied action when the duke asks the guest to go down and as they descend he draws it has attention to find bronze statue neptune so this shows that he is very greedy and he wants a dowry uh, a handsome dowry thus as a dramatic monologue the poem is remarkable for character study so here browning dramatic genius for character study is illustrated beautifully in subtle and ironical characterization of of the duke so this was all about the poem as a dramatic monologue i hope you have got the poem uh, got the idea thank you